So Islam is a religion that is a religion of 2 billion people today, but this message was not viral seventh, in the 7th century Arabia. At that time, it, came, it literally started with only one man, one person. His name is Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, Muhammad, peace be upon him, the prophet of Islam, the, a prophet of all humanity today, actually. Um, uh, this prophet, Prophet Muhammad, uh, is believed to be or known to be from the lineage uh, of Abraham as well. So actually, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, they all have a lineage-wise connection and a faith-wise connection and a spiritual connection with the, their father, Abraham. So Prophet Muhammad happens to be from the descendants of uh, Abraham or Abraham or Ibrahim. Peace be upon them all. Uh, we actually mention their names with the honorifics. So Quran was the revelation that he received in that Arabia back then. And this revelation actually mandates not only him, but also people around him mandated them. And today it mandates Muslims also to follow it and to listen to its message. That's why every Muslim, wherever they are, whatever uh, they call, whether they call themselves Sunni or Sufi or Shia, these are three famous uh, uh, groups or denominations, whatever, uh, they all subscribe to the same fundamental source. Same source is interpreted for each community. And today's message of environment or climate that I'm going to present is actually going to echo a common theme that is, that is communicated or echoed among all Muslims. Uh, in fact, going to this fundamental source of Islam, the Quran, and remember, the second uh, segment of video will be talking about the teachings of Prophet Muhammad. Because Muhammad, how he translated and communicated that message, how he interpreted this, it's very important, the practical examples. Uh, so, uh, one of the, actually, one of the major themes of the Quran, one of the fundamental themes, in fact, there's a book called Major Themes of the Quran by University of Chicago professor Fazlur Rahman. You can uh, Google it. In fact, it will be available um, as a, even as a PDF as well. Uh, late professor from University of Chicago. Uh, the professor dedicated an entire chapter, I'm talking about this book, where he dedicated an entire chapter on nature and Quran. So yes, the fundamental source of guidance in Islam, that is the most important. In fact, if a Muslim does not believe in Quran, is not a Muslim. Uh, and a universal, actually Quran is a universal message too, actually brings the first thing to people is that Islam is a natural religion. Yes, it's a religion of fitra. Fitra. So I'm going straight at that source, Quran, from the, I have slides for you so that you can always go to these websites, Quran.com, chapter 30, surah 30. God Almighty says, and of course address Muhammad person and all people, that Direct yourself, face yourself toward a religion inclining to truth, adhere to fitra. The word is fitra, which is translated as nature. The translator here does not translate uh, for many reasons, uh, uh, because it's a very big term. It says, inclining to that truth, the fitra of Allah, nature of God, upon which he has created all people, all people, no change change should there be in the creation of Allah, in the creation of Allah. No change there should be, and that is the correct religion. Another interpretive translation, this is more literal. I have an interpretive translation right there for you, where God Almighty says, this, I'll read this for you, and you can also read it while you're looking at the slide, that therefore, set your purpose for the upright system of life that resonates with Allah's law of origination, Allah's law of fitra, nature, the word that he did not translate originally, including the origination of mankind. You know, I'll stop at this. You can read the rest. Same surah, uh, different website. Uh, the point being said here is that God is actually telling people, keep not just yourself, but all things at their pure nature. So Islam actually is a religion of nature, religion of natural things, a religion that wants mankind, humankind, and the jinn kind, and all the kinds,
to be on their own organic structure, on their own organic nature. Do not temper with that nature. Quran is saying that. And to go further, actually, Quran makes it even more explicit. In fact, in Quran, there's talk of cosmos, there's talk of winds and stars and planets. And Quran says that in the change of day and night and seasons, there are signs for people to reflect. This is a huge section of the Quran. I'm just literally scratching the surface here. I hope you, 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 you feel me. So this is, I have a selected an example for you. Another example of this huge genre. Uh, chapter 55 of the Quran called The Compassionate, The Merciful, uh, one of the names of God Almighty. In fact, all 99 names of God that Muslims uh, chant and sing and remember also resonate in the nature of the, this God's creation, the universe, the cosmos, and especially our planet Earth. So the highlight here of this slide is from 5 to 10. Look, he says, he says that the sun the the sun and the moon move according to a plan and the stars and the trees prostrate themselves meaning they are in obedience to that nature with which god created things uh and the sky he raised and he set up a balance speaking of balance this is something important so do not transgress in the balance but maintain the weights with justice and do not violate the balance. Again, it says that. And the last thing, and the earth he set up for the creatures. Does not say only for man or humankind, us people. It says creatures, all creatures. And another revelation of the Quran actually made people literally scratch their heads like, wow, is this really what God is saying? It says everything. This is the one. Again, from Quran.com. Again, Quran is only one text, but you know these beautiful websites give you varieties of transitions. This is one of the one of the good websites where you can choose any transition you like. But this is a almost the same transition wherever you go. Uh, very, very self-explanatory self-explanatory words. Me as a non-Arab, I'm telling that. Six thirty-eight, chapter six, surah six, verse thirty-eight sa it says, "Every living thing that crawls on this earth, and every bird, every creature that flies above you." It says they are umam, umam, umamun amthalukum. Like you, they are nations, they are communities. Wow. And the rest of the verse talks about other things also. It's a very, very powerful message that it, it had the, the commentators of the Quran literally like took them by an awe. Like, really? Really? Communities? Yes. And some translations will say umam can be translated as communities and nations which means that they are moral communities. They have a life, they have rights, they have, they have, um, uh, they have uh, certain obligations, they have a system, and therefore we should not mess up that balance that, that is there. So we humans being on this earth, being stewards of this earth, um, I, I know there are some verses that, that will say in all three uh, communities, that uh, this is in the service of man, but service is different, abuse is different. So God actually is highlighting a point here that don't abuse them. Do not abuse them. How Prophet Muhammad translated that, remember, the second fundamental source of Islam's guidance is this role model, exemplar person from a very noble lineage of Abraham, who he becomes a translator of the Quran from his actions. How so? In fact, he would tell people, appreciate the nature, appreciate when a rain would come, you know, of course that you could say it's in a desert context, but however, he would tell people to be respectful to things even in extreme circumstances. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. He was traveling with some of his followers and one of his followers picked up some baby chicks from a nest. He didn't know right away. He noticed that there's a bird flying above them. He said, wait a second. This is a mother bird. And remember, he's a man living uh, not like in us, our time, we don't even experience the nature. He says, who has harmed her? Did anyone mess up something in their nest or something? One of them said, yeah, I have the baby chicks. He said, you have distressed a mother. Go back and put the babies back to the mother's nest. So 
that Revelation 638 is being translated right here in a practical example in a desert where food is scarce he's saying put them back you have distressed a mother another example water water uh, just think about us taking a shower or brushing our teeth how much water do we waste he said even if you have a stream or a river in front of you do not waste water for your showers or bathing or what have you use minimum use minimum in fact he told people let me teach you how you can take a shower in a jug with one jug of water he showed people almost like a sponge bath he would tell them to not abuse resources another other example was animals speaking of animal rights uh, sure Muslim a lot of Muslims consume halal meat and all that but at the same time he told people to be respectful to their rights as well be you know, having that balance in mind he said uh, once in a garden somebody was um, you know very aggressive and abusive to his camel he said he went to the camel and nobody was daring go near the camel because the camel was upset and camel when a camel is angry in the desert you have to be worried, be worried about your safety because that's a very difficult challenge he says no i know how to uh, he petted him and had a walk with him and comes out and says where is the master of this camel so he tells the the guy the guy shows up says i am he says you have been abusing this animal you are he's saying he's complaining to me he says oh prophet of god this guy this follower of yours is making me overwork the man was in tears he said i'm sorry actually i'm going to relieve him from all his duties i'm not going to have him do any labor now for me that's this is the Islamic message from Quran and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad. And other things are like if there are endangered species, their hunting is forbidden in Islam. In fact, I'll tell you something very important. Much before a lot of the people in the, in the, uh, in the envi envi environmentalist community do not know that, that before even the West had an eye on uh, animal rights and other things related to nature, Islam had them already extrapolated based on these sources of guidance in the medieval times. As early as medieval times, which are 500 golden years of Islam, going all the way back to 8th century till 14th, 15th century. Muslim world had it already there. So a lot of animal rights and things have been extrapolated from sayings, sayings such as this, just for the knowledge of the environmentalist community. So keeping that in mind, uh, there's one issue that now I'm coming to this third segment of our um, video that what are the issues? The issue is not our climate is not affected just because there's a rising population. And sadly, some of the activism took place in, in ways that it again shook that balance of the world. Think of China's one child ban. Think of communities in so many counties actually in japan that have people mostly in their 80s and 90s they they have the the, the percentage the balance between young and old is shaken shaken where government will pay you money to have kids this is the problem and, and islam is against such unnatural ways of fixing a problem where are our real problems i'll tell you a problem one of our big problem is waste all kinds of waste food most important thing we love food we eat food right food we are this is from epa's website from epa epa is saying that we are wasting 41 million tons of food every year from the generated food the produce only i mean the sad part is that i looked at usda FDA in their official websites also it was shocking that in 2010 one of the stats on the uh, on their website uh, fda.gov they said 31% of the food that goes to waste is at the retailer level 161 billion dollars worth of food in 2010 went to waste some of this goes to waste because we want to artificially control the price also this is this is our problem and speaking of that waste, think of all the food and all the waste, all the plastic, all the junk that is dumped into the ocean. 
think about think about other issues such as uh, this one fracking this is actually destroying our lands yes even though the companies claim that it's very safe and all that hydraulic uh, it's called hydraulic fracturing or something uh, or fracking is the famous word that it's known for i actually read a study where one of the epa scientists took a, a matter into uh, invest further deeper investigation in wyoming somewhere where uh, people c complained that their water did, did not taste right uh, he found out that in 2016 there was a, it was a published peer-reviewed study in environmental science and technology the report found out that fracking waste is what had contaminated the water according to the scientific american this is what's happening these are the issues and let's not forget uh, deforestation we are cutting forests right and left there is hardly there's hardly any uh, any good uh, and there's hardly any places where we don't have we where we have uh, forests that are not touched by humans like pure forests like amazons other places there there's huge huge levels of deforestation that's happening uh, unfortunately we're not doing anything in fact i was I was born and raised in a city before migrating to America a long, long time ago, where the garden city is turned into a city of industries and uh, housing societies and all that. Whereas there's so much land that is not a green land, is still left untouched. Bad management, bad planning led us to this. So my my last and but not the least request would be that if we set aside our temporary goals of materialism, cheaper gas, and uh, so many other temporary materialistic goals, and look at these things just beyond the consumer level, we look at look at these things in a level in, in a in a in a manner of stewardship, and in a manner of spiritual uh, treatment. That how spiritually I would like to be treated, I should treat this earth and its resources in that manner. Things may get better. And we may have a better world ahead of us because we have to, in order for us to make real changes, we have to come together. People of faith-based communities and people who do not practice faith, everybody has to come together and we should look at the issues that are common. Like everybody knows that it's not good to dump waste in the ocean, uh, the nuclear waste and all kinds of plastic and everything that is being thrown there. We, I think we, this is where we all could be on one page and we could take the issues together for a better world, hopefully, if not today, sometime sooner. And uh, uh, it would be, I think, our kids, if not us, our kids may appreciate that at some point. Thank you so much for listening to this message. <laughs> Thank you.